Sierra Leone is blessed with abundant water resources in the form of rivers, springs, and underground water deposits. Seven major rivers cross the country, while substantial underground water deposits can be found in many regions. From 1991 to 2002, the nation suffered a brutal civil war that affected millions of people. Water supply and sanitation infrastructure were destroyed. So too was water resource monitoring equipment. Households and communities across Sierra Leone were left without basic water supply and sanitation services. Government institutions at local and central levels were left substantially weakened and the international community classed Sierra Leone as a fragile state. Joint monitoring program statistics show that in 2012, only 60% of the population had access to an improved water source and this number drops down to just 42% when looking at rural areas only. In urban areas, 64% of the population has access to improved sanitation. However, only 26% have access when looking at rural areas only. Like for this your area, so we can stand for water so much. People like it more than this. But for today, I don't know that today the way again be the car, but that make we get much population here. But actually, we can stand here so for water. From this morning, 6 o'clock, and I can't have a get to water. Today, today, then people don't go here. This area, now one cream pump right there. We can pass this way, wait to come in. They are Papa. Now, when I have to let the water come up free. Since the end of the Civil War, Sierra Leone has made steady but slow progress in extending water supply and sanitation coverage. Water security and water resource management has seen little long-term improvement. Something had to change. Water and sanitation, or what we call WASH, are key to lifting Sierra Leoneans out of poverty and promoting socio-economic development. Despite our enormous water resources, hundreds and thousands of Sierra Leoneans still lack access to good water or good sanitation facilities. Because of this, we have to change how we think and a new approach is needed and that's exactly what we're doing to solve this problem. Sanitation and hygiene is very important in the wash delivery services and uh, we believe in the Ministry of Health and Sanitation and ask the government that without sanitation and hygiene, any investment in water um, will be wasted investment because to assure the well-being of the population and have the health benefits um, that we so desire, um, sanitation and hygiene should be integrated in WASH. A review of the United Nations Joint Monitoring Program shows that coverage levels for water supply increased steadily from 49% to 60% from 2008 to 2012. The numbers for sanitation during the same years show something much worse. During the same period, the number of people with access to sanitation remained at just 41%. This does not mean that no progress has been made in sanitation. Major strides have been made in CLTS and hand washing campaigns that may not be reflected in the JMP figures. More than 1,000 communities have been declared open defecation free and more than 6,000 communities targeted with hand washing campaigns. Sierra Leone is one of the key countries that has made had drastic improvement in um, community-led total sanitation. And when we look at one of the programs underneath that is the Open Defecation Free Program. We have got uh, worldwide recognition in that. For us in Sierra Leone, what needs to be done beyond where we are to sustain um, the community-led total sanitation is to continue in our investment so that we could have the local products that our communities need so that it could sustain the good work they have been doing. It's continued education and sensitization in the areas that we need to get done to encourage our communities so that they could see the good work and reward um, the good behaviors that we're seeing in some of our communities. 
the reasons that sanitation and water supply coverage has not progressed at a more impressive rate are multiple and complex. But it's only recently that the conventional approach to wash service delivery has been scrutinized. What I would say about the future of this, the water sector is we're at the start of a very long and to be honest difficult journey. In this journey we have the challenges of one, creating legal change, two, finding the finances to provide sustainable water supply facilities, managing those, the, the implementation of that facility, creating a system to, 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 to sustainable manage them and on a softer issue, being able to change the attitudes of people. That's a very long and difficult journey. In 2011, the National Water and Sanitation Policy was launched. The WASH policy provides a roadmap to the future ambitions in the nation's water and sanitation sectors. The government's commitment to the sector was further demonstrated in the creation of a stand-alone Ministry of Water Resources dedicated to addressing the challenges in the sector head-on. In 2013, at the first Water Supply and Sanitation Conference, the President, His Excellency Dr. Ernest Bai Kuruma, expressed his commitment to the sector and highlighted the role that water resources can play in the country. This morning, I want to concentrate on what I believe are our greatest challenges. Delivering lasting and permanent water and sanitation services to all Sierra Leone's people. The gains shown by the new ministry have been impressive, and in 2013, the Ministry of Water Resources was awarded a gold medal from the president, recognizing it as the most outstanding ministry. Increasingly, Sierra Leone's water resources face pressures through a growing population and expanding industry. In the absence of a robust ideological monitoring network, no one knows with certainty how much renewable water resources are available in the country. The new ministry recognizes the importance of water resource management and ensuring water security into the future. Well, in terms of water uh, resource management, the Ministry of Water Resources has adopted a very pragmatic approach to doing so. So a new bill has been drafted to be enacted into law which will form the National Water Resource Management Agency which will be in charge of managing the resource, planning, protection of catchment areas and also monitoring. Now a lot has always said that Sierra Leone has so much water but no one really knows how much water and there's a seasonal variation to that. While we have a lot of water in the rainy season, we don't have as much water in the dry season. But it's not just enough to say so, because if you don't monitor a particular resource, you won't know how to manage it. Um, for the Roquette Sele River, we have um, a hydrologic monitoring exercise that started there, because that is a very major river in Sierra Leone. In that river, you have upstream, Bumbuna, for hydroelectricity, you have ADAX for bioenergy, you have African minerals, and it's also the, the river where we would extract water for the proposed Roquel. So while we know there's a lot of water going down, if we can measure how much each of those various players are extracting from that, we'll be able to plan not just um, how much water is there, but how much water will be there for the future. From 2011 to 2012, the Ministry of Water Resources commissioned a water point mapping survey. Over a six-month period, around 29,000 water points were mapped. The results were alarming. It was found that at any one time, one-third of water points constructed are non-functioning. Furthermore, of those that are functioning, more than half are seasonal, meaning they do not supply water all year round. They take several weeks without water, and when they come, not even last for five hours. They go again, so we sit there again, and they go back fast to the It's too much. You constrain. So this is now a major problem for human water. In the rural areas, the conventional approach has been towards capital investment in facilities such as water points and hand pumps. 
This investment has traditionally been largely subsidized by donors or implementing agencies in the order of 90 to 100 percent. It is evident that the issue of sustainability has not been well enough addressed. The outcome is that these services function for a short period and then fall into a state of disrepair. People then go back to using unprotected sources like rivers and streams. The African Development Bank is a major development partner in turning this trend around by supporting rural and peri-urban water supply and sanitation projects across Sierra Leone. In regards to the African Development Bank support to this sector, currently we have uh, two active investment projects with a value of over US dollars, 100 million. In fact, it's one of the, I mean, our biggest investments in the country, so we are very active in that sector. And these are two projects, basically, and one of them is what we call the Three Towns Water Supply and Sanitation Project. Then uh, the other project is what we call the Rural Water Supply and Sanitation Project. This we are I mean, providing, of course, in collaboration with uh, DFIT and uh, the Rural Water Supply and Sanitation Initiative that is hosted by the bank. And with this, uh, we are I mean, trying to address water supply and sanitation constraints in five districts, namely Kambia, Kono, Bont, Koinadugu, and um, Pujehun. Here again, we are again targeting a population of about 625,000 people in these districts, and of which, in, which includes about 90, 91,000 school children as well. So again, I mean, if completed, we hope that we'll be able to increase uh, water supply by about 9% in this uh, district and maybe 7% also for the sanitation uh, as well. The Sierra Leone Water Company, or Salwalco, was established in 2001 and is responsible for providing water to provincial headquarter towns and large rural settlements. We are mainly responsible to provide water in um, urban and um, rural areas besides Freetown. The core aspect of Salwako is to operate a utility and also provide technical support to the councils. Things in the past were very, very bad, but with the establishment of the new Ministry of Water Resources, um, the coming in of uh, donor partners, the government initiative to purely give water a priority is changing the picture very, very fast. Salwako has contributed greatly to the increase of water supply and sanitation services right across the country. These projects include rehabilitating and improving existing infrastructure as well as the construction of new facilities. The Three Towns Water Supply and Sanitation Project is a $62 million flagship project funded by the African Development Bank rehabilitating and improving water distribution and sanitation services in Bo, Makini and Kenema. We, we are, we are I mean, expecting significant uh, human capital and gender outcomes from these investments. Of course, we hope that with these uh, investments we'll be able to reduce waterborne diseases, there will be an improvement I mean, in the country's uh, infant mortality rates. There will also be I mean, improvement in terms of the girl child, especially their ability to go to school, because we know they, the, the girl child is the one that is most constrained when there's no water supply. These are the people that wake up in the morning, have to go and get water. When they get back from school, have to go and look for water, affecting their education. Additionally, a number of innovative pilot projects have been trialing new approaches to water supply in smaller areas. Along the Mashiaka Highway, the construction of solar-powered boreholes is bringing water to small communities. While in Lonsar, the implementation of containerized water treatment systems allow for cheaper and shorter setup times for medium-sized towns. The water will be the drink here, it will come out up hill, it go down, also when the rain they come, it will take all the rubbish, go put the places and then they get water. So that water, they always will be the drink, it will make me problem, it will make me sick. But now, God will help me, we don't get solar water. In Lonsaria, this project is an innovative project. It is a containerized system. What do I mean by containerized system? All the components within the treatment plants, 
It's been inbuilt. It's an inbuilt system brought from um, Belgium and been installed in Sierra Leone. As compared to other stations, other stations take maybe a year or two for, um, in, um, for construction. And while it's in Losaria, it's just six months to fix up the components. It is easily moved, easily fixed up. So I think it is one of the most cheapest construction projects we've ever had within the water sector. While a number of impressive gains have been made by Salwalco in infrastructure development, it must be remembered that this infrastructure requires good management systems to ensure sustainability. You realize that now we are currently or rapidly rehabilitating the infrastructure. Most of the facilities now in Bo, Kenema, Makini, Cambia, Kailau, Kabala, Lunsar, Mile 91 are all being rehabilitated. But what will happen after this? When these facilities are rehabilitated, if we do not have the good management system to actually operate them, it will really be a wasteful investment. So, it, joined with the current rehabilitation, the Ministry of Water Resources and Salwako and the donor partners are putting together management systems. We have a whole package of an institutional reform to ensure that when these constructions are completed, there are management uh, systems in place to ensure that they, they operate as viable utilities so that we'll be able to compete with the international community. There has been less progress with Salwaco uh, in its responsibility and mandate for looking at uh, rural smaller town water supplies. Salwaco management really needs to grasp the opportunities that are available both from us, from DFID, and from the African Development Bank to start to address some of the capacity and management issues that really need to be uh, sorted out um, if Sawako is to move forward. Of course, for rural areas and small towns, the local councils are responsible, so there has been some tension on the roles and responsibilities of Salwalco in these areas. Through the legal reforms that the Ministry of Water Resources is leading, these challenges are being resolved and Salwalco is transitioning to being able to provide technical support to councils as needed. The mandate by the Act of uh, the Decentralization 2004 gives power to the local councils to ensure that safe, portable, affordable and adequate water is given to the people in their respective localities at district level. As a mandate, we are to ensure at district level, of course, um, well, as I said, I'm working with the Ministry of Water Resources. We are assigned to local councils to ensure that we give them technical backup from the inception of project, from identification of the I mean, I mean, community needs for planning, coordination, and to ensure that the services in terms of physical accessibility is being given to the people. So we see it to be very important. The challenges of water supply and sanitation is not confined to rural areas only. The Guma Valley Water Company remains the key water utility for Freetown. Freetown's major water source is the Guma Dam, located in the forest reserves at mile 13. The Guma Dam supplies 83 million liters of water per day to an urban conglomeration of around 2 million people. This, this is the Guma Valley Dam, the main facility that the company operates, responsible for 98% of the treated water that goes to Freetown. Our coverage area is from Sussex in the west to Allentown in the east. Of course, Freetown has grown beyond those bounds. Uh, the total population of the western area is estimated to be 2 million, but we think we're, we're only serving about 50% of that, which is about a million, people, a million people. Now, it's a very good facility. The location, as you can see, is still pristine. It's about 200 meters above sea level, so you can, we can collect water in the rainy season and you know, use it throughout the dry season. We don't have to pump because of the elevation, so that saves a lot of uh, saves us a lot of money, which means uh, it doesn't also cost the consumers much money. However, it is clear that the current Guma Dam is facing a number of challenges as the population increases. We're losing about 20 to 30 percent of the water that we're sending to Freetown. I mean, that's massive. 
So the first thing we need to tackle is address those leaks. Addressing those leaks would mean we extend the distribution network. If you go into most of the city sections, you see these long specialty lines, people, some, some, some of it over one kilometer long. We, we need to bring the, the, the sub mains, these are the three or the four inches pipes, closer to where the people, uh, uh, the houses are. So that from your house, you just a short distance, you connect to the network. Another major issue Guma Dam and Freetown's water supply faces is ongoing encroachment into the catchment areas. Encroachment in the catchment areas. This is when people move into the catchment area and clear the forest for farming activities, for housing, for various things. If the forest is not there, what you get is a lot of uh, cloudy uh, water with lots of particles in there, which is which one clogs up the system, two, it costs a lot more to treat that kind of water. Already, expansion projects have been implemented, such as two newly built reservoirs that serve the eastern part of Freetown during the wet season. There are further plans to source water from the Rukel River to boost water supply to the east and central part of Freetown. The proposed project is estimated at $300 million to be completed within 36 months from commencement. The water intake point would be located two kilometers upstream from the Rugbe Bridge in the Port Local District and will pump up to 105,000 cubic meters per day into storage tanks for onward transmission to Freetown. It is expected that the construction of this new facility will address the water supply situation in Freetown. However, infrastructure alone cannot solve Freetown's water supply issues. A major event that was undertaken in this uh, transformation drive is what we refer to as the 100 days transformation. You know, there was a time when we realized that we cannot continue doing business in the normal way. So we decided as a company, with the support of the board, the government and our donors to undertake a major transformation. It was basically an engineering you know, of our attitude, of our management style to ensure that we improve on what we do. We are basically aiming at operational efficiency and as I speak, about 12 months down the road, we've made significant progress in that direction. A lot of improvement has been made over the years, but honestly, we strongly believe that a lot more needs to be done because our mandate is to make water available to the residents of the town. And until every household gets water, I think we still have a work to do. And that's why we won't relent until we attain that objective. It's interesting in the last few years that um, Guma Valley Water Company has made great strides and efforts to improve the service to Freetown, but there is still an awful long way to go. Uh, access is very poor, the system is in need of substantial investment on rehabilitation and renewal, and there's a great need to work, continue to work on the management, but in that regard, uh, the Guma Valley Water Company board and, and management team have put in a large amount of effort on starting off a process of uh, internally driven reforms. And that is starting to show some progress. Monitoring of infrastructure projects, institutional practices and finances plays an important role in ensuring that progress in the sector is performed in an efficient and transparent manner. The Parliamentary Oversight Committee has the duty to observe and report on all operations across the sector. We have the responsibility as members of parliament to actually go into these communities again to see how these ministries, agencies and departments are spending this money in terms of project, in terms of any other thing. That is why we are here today. We are at the site here inspecting the work uh, done by uh, 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 one of the Chinese contractor construction company, uh, which is an international company for the three tons water. I believe they are doing a good job and I believe the ministry is a very young one, it's a baby ministry, but with our support and with the support of government, I believe we are in here to legislate policies uh, that will actually help the ministry to grow. And I believe what I've seen all over the place is 
within the next 24 months, within the next 12 to 24 months, our people in the provinces have great hope for pure and clean water. Civil society also plays a major role in engaging with government and other stakeholders to ensure proper sector coordination. And key to note is that um, we, uh, as a civil society process, we do expect governments to ensure that there is effective and proper sector coordination within the, the, the water and sanitation area. And so, by so doing, we will be able to, like, able to meaningfully make use of those limited resources you know, that have been um, ill-targeted in terms of development. And we are also able to prioritize sector financing you know, within the government budget. And so these are like key areas we see as civil society for greater prospect within the sector. The key challenge that remains is to ensure these water supply systems are operated and maintained. Ultimately, this requires people to be treated as valid customers and to pay for water. In the short term, it is highly likely that recurrent costs will need to be subsidized by government. International donors are often reluctant to fund recurrent costs, and payment for water may not cover the full recurrent costs in the short term. An Electricity and Water Regulatory Commission has been established by the President to set guidelines on tariffs and to monitor the service providers. Its role is to provide a moderating role between the ministry, which is the policy entity on energy and water, and the operators who provide the service. Our role is to ensure that tariffs are, that are being given out to subscribers are fair, and also we ensure that there is reliability in the service and there is quality in the service. On the flip side, we ensure that the service provider themselves are able not only to get returns from their investments, but also to have a profit margin that can enable them to expand their service to other areas that are being disadvantaged at the moment. The clear message emerging is to think beyond numbers and coverage statistics. A balance needs to be made between capital investment in wash infrastructure and also building the institutional capacity and the technical ability of individuals in the sector. The, the wash sector is benefiting from technical assistance um, provided through DFID, um, African Development Bank, UNICEF. And this assistance is focused on helping the, the sector to build institutions that will implement uh, WASH, WASH programs. This is important because you can build all the infrastructure if the institutions are not in place to ensure that service delivery is actually uh, undertaken, then all the money that would have put in infrastructure would have gone to waste. So in the last two, three years, the sector has benefited from training that has been available to WASH sector actors, both at national and, and local levels. The sector has also benefited from training that has been extended to local councils to draw up WASH investment plans. Essentially, if you don't have a plan, then even when you have the money, you cannot implement a plan. So we have held the local councils to draw up WASH investment plans, and it is our hope that these plans will feed into national planning and that they can get the resources to implement um, the, 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 the water and sanitation programs. In terms of delivering water services to the people, the biggest challenge we have is to improve accessibility and the sustainability of services through collective efforts at national, local and community levels for our people to take ownership of the investments that the public sector, the government, our donor partners are doing in the sector. We are now in close collaboration with the Minister of Health, the Minister of Education, Science and Technology, the Minister of Social Welfare, Gender and Children's Affairs, the Minister of Local Government and the Minister of Finance, uh, who, which is the arm that really can support us financially. We know government cannot do it all alone. We know it's government responsibility really to provide water and proper sanitation for the people of this country, but government cannot do it all alone. 
development partners and external agencies supporting the sector include the African Development Bank, the Government of China, DFID, the Islamic Development Bank, JICA, UNICEF, the World Bank, the Water and Sanitation Program, and the Government of India, among others. In Freetown, the Urban Watch Consortium brings together five international non-governmental organizations, including Oxfam, Save the Children, Goal, Axon Controller Firm, and Concern to ensure consistency across the sector. The value of NGOs, particularly in the WASH sector, is to be able to adapt and innovate and to set up new ideas and develop them which then enable um, perhaps government to then take them on and uh, to work with them further. Um, in particular, the consortium, because of its nature, it relies very much on coordination. So in a sense, we can get an advantage from the consortium, from both having NGOs, uh, but also uh, the consortium itself helps to harmonize the activities of the different NGOs. So you, in a sense, you have the best of both worlds. You have both the opportunity to innovate and the opportunity um, to have kind of consistency and coordination and harmonization. One key message that we all need to be mindful of is that Sierra Leone has substantial water resources. And it is known that water resources can drive socioeconomic development. So the Ministries of Finance, the Ministry of Economic Planning and others should see the link between water resources development and economic growth. Because once you have economic growth, then improved access to water and sanitation would come, will come with it. And that economic growth, as I'm saying, can be driven through a proper harnessing of our water resources for mining, for energy, for irrigation, and of course, more importantly, for drinking water supply. If we're able to put all these together, given the substantial water resources that Sierra Leone has, we believe that water infrastructure can get up, uh, let us leap to where we want to get to. And this is being reflected by the Ministry of Finance and Economic Development through increased budget allocation to the sector. The government has committed to progressive annual increase in national budget allocation of up to 3% for water supply and 1% for sanitation by 2016. These commitments are further backed up with the development of a WASH investment plan and effort to strengthening monitoring and evaluation in the sector, including financial tracking by 2016. Sierra Leone has been classed as a country at the crossroads. It has the opportunity to push forward and accelerate and sustain water supply and sanitation coverage, avoiding many of the problems often encountered by other countries. As a new ministry, we, we have done quite a lot. That is why we, we are considered the best ministry last year and we don't want to sit by and let that laurel just go down the drains. So we are going to continue engaging ourselves and uh, to make sure we keep improving on the service delivery. It is vital that sanitation and hygiene that in the past has been neglected be the focal point of where we are in the development agenda. What we have done in the Agenda for Prosperity has made, we have made sanitation a flagship project, scaling up hygiene and sanitation as a flagship project in the Agenda for Prosperity. And the goal of the Ministry of Health and Sanitation is to ensure that that particular objective, that flagship within the Agenda for Prosperity is realized and we do the right thing um, for sanitation and hygiene in the country. All what we're doing is not about politics, it's really about national development. Uh, now, as the Water Minister, I'll be the first to tell you that the road ahead is quite rough. It's a long journey, but I'm committed, His Excellency the President is committed, and this government is committed to ensure that we don't solve the problem for the short term or the medium term. Those are political gimmicks. What we are committed to is to solve the problem for generations to come. And I sit here very confident as the Minister of Water Resources that we will do it. We will solve the water situation, not just in building the facilities, but ensuring that we put good sustainable management systems in place to ensure that generations after us will be proud that when our names were called, we delivered. <music>